mercy. We just want to say thank you. Thank you. Because praying for this church as a whole, yeah. from the youngest to the oldest, yeah. there's any sick among us.
we'll have our morning scripture this morning from 2 Chronicles uh, 7 and 14. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then when I will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their land. Amen. May God have a blessing in the reading of his words. May you continue standing and we'll do our church vision. We envision all Christians together serving the Lord and unbiting in Christ. Our mission is to win souls. Amen. 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 We'll have our observation from the pastor and then our announcements. Amen. We'll go ahead and have our announcements first. Brotherhood, which meets every second and fourth Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. Also, our Mission One meet every third Saturday at 10 a.m. And our Mission Two, which meets every second Wednesday of the month of the week um, at 6 p.m. GLBC Neighborhood Food Pantry is in operation every first and third Wednesday of the month. This week it will be January 4th from 6 p.m. from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. And also our GLBC Outreach Pantry is in operation every Tuesday. Yeah. And it is this Tuesday, January 3rd at 6 p.m. Amen. Amen. Don't forget about the John Gonzalez Scholarship Committee. A meeting of importance is scheduled for Tuesday, January the 3rd, 2023 at 6 p.m. <coughs> Committee is sponsoring a soul food dinner sale Saturday, February the 18th at 11, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Pre-sale tickets will be $15 per plate. The menu consists of a choice of three entrees, smothered chicken, over rice, pig feet, or meatloaf. Mm -hmm. Choose three of the following. Greens, yams, black eyed peas, macaroni and cheese, cornbread, a choice from one of the lists of assorted desserts, which is peach cobbler, pound cake, banana pudding, and a drink. Amen. <laughs> Uh, additional, no. as a side, you can get a 16 ounce bowl of chitlins uh -oh. for a purchase of $10. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Please, Sister Lemuel, Sister Deborah Rose, or Sister Baptiste for tickets. Save the date for our Black History Program on Sunday, February the 19th, 2023, at 10 a.m. Minister Mandrell Allen will be our guest speaker. Amen. 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 Sister Perilee Sanders mourned the loss of her nephew, Brother Dan Mays Jr. Service is pending, so let's keep Sister Sanders and her family in our prayers. Amen. 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 
Those are our announcements for the week, our thought of the day. In 2023, make it your business to draw nigh to God and we will draw nigh to you. Amen. 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 Our leg ladies minister constance grant your announcement sister kim the today amen 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 amen, amen. amen. I want to say Happy New Year's to everyone. Look at your name and say Happy New Year's. Happy New Year's. Happy New Year's. Happy New Year's. Going into 2023, uh, we just gonna have to do better in a lot of things, in a lot of ways. Uh, and it'll begin with me as the leader. We just got to do better. I'm so grateful to God just to be here. Amen. Uh, let's, let's, let's keep Sister Sanders in our prayers. Amen. Amen. Lost the niece. And I want you to keep, keep me in contact, Sister Sanders. When is the funeral going to be and all that? Uh, Amen. In 2023, it's going to be better. Look at your name and say it's going to be better. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. So, so look for me to be positive in 2023. So when you become negative, I'm going to become positive. Don't, don't think it's strange. I'm just going to be positive. Because we got to do better. I am so grateful, really, 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 to be here. Any, anybody grateful to be here this morning? Come on, just thank the Lord for life, health, and strength. We, we had a wonderful time last night at our New Year's Eve service over at Greater Union. We had a great time, and I, I'm grateful. I'm thankful to God for our uh, all the women went forth. And, and, and I'm grateful for the two brothers I'm with because everybody don't believe like I. So, so I'm grateful to God that somebody got enough sense to realize that, that women can go forward too. And uh, you can say what you want to say from the old school and all that. Well, they ain't. You keep saying that. That's, that's fine. But he didn't call you to be the pastor. Bless his name. Uh, we, we had some tough times in 2022. We had some tough times in 2021. And in the beginning, listen, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Oh, don't talk back to me. It's going to get worse before it gets better. So in 2022, 2023, you, you, this, is, this is my motto. You better start believing God. In the word of God. Look at your name and says all about the word of God. Come on, it ain't about what people say, but it's about the word. You want to have to do this in 2023 because it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse before it gets better. And I believe that God is going to test our faith to see rather what we've been preaching, what we've been saying, what we've been praying about. this morning. That's my wife and male. Uh, I miss them so much. I'm so used to seeing them after the 23 years. I'm so used to seeing them and them riding with me, but they are a little bit under the weather. And we got a lot of people that are under the weather. The little thing is blowing. The wind is blowing. So we were cold and stuffed up and all of that. But I thank God for all of you that came. Listen, they don't need enough. You coming to church in 2023 and letting the devil make you just sit there and be quiet. They don't need you doing that. Man, 2022 is gone. 23 is here. They don't need you sitting back and letting the devil make you be 
why you got to listen. Sometimes you got to open up your mouth, open up your vocal cord and let the Lord know that you love him. Let the Lord know that you're going to send some glory up. You're going to send some praise up. You just going to do it, but you got to let the Lord know that. So don't, I can't say, man, it's a little quiet in there. I don't like quiet church. I don't like this Tell anybody I ain't come from a place that's quiet. I, I, I'm, I'm loud and I like to make noise. So y'all, come on, let's 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 have some show love, show love, church, man. I I, I don't want to drag into 2023, man. Let's be excited about Jesus because listen, people are dying and going away from me each and every day. So let's get excited because He might call your number.
They repeat after me for our times and offering prayer. May the, seed May the seed never leave my life, never leave my life. but go into my future, go into my future. Multiply. multiply, and come back. Come back. Good measure, Good measure. Pressed, down. pressed down, shaken together, shaken together. and running over. And run over. In God's sovereign seed. Amen, amen. We have our pastor have a... Sister Rachel, what are you doing? First of all, I pray to God and each and every one of you for the present. I just rose to say, I want to thank you to each and every one of you for your prayers, your cards. First of all, through my sickness, those of you that call me, most of you call me just right on time. Uh, thank you all for the comments that we got going to give on my sister and my sister-in-law. That's all right. I ask that you all just continue to pray for us. Amen. Amen. It's still kind of hard. Yeah. You know, God is too wise to make a mistake. Amen. Thank you, Sister Rachel. I have to do two things quickly. Uh, sometimes I go too fast. Listen, uh, let's say amen for Sister Sandra. Yeah. She's at the Amalam County last Sunday, going under, but uh, we, yeah, thank you for standing. Thank the Lord. Come on, y'all, let's thank the Lord, man, that she's here. Thank the Lord that the Lord, the Lord brought her out. And the Lord sent her back to church. We thank, thank, thank God for that. Because he's the only one that did that. Thank the Lord. Now all of you that are officers, I need you to come around the altar. Every officer that was chosen in 20, year 2023, I need you to come around the altar. I just want to pray over you. Say a few encouraging words to you. That I think that'll be vital, instrumental to you serving, serving in this church for 2023. I want to, as they're coming, I want to say to all of you that. Leadership, when it comes to leading people in whatever auxiliary you're in, whatever capacity that you lead, I want you to understand something that it, it, it's not going to be easy. Don't think that I got a title, I got a position. And it's going to be some kind of cakewalk in the park. It's not going to be like that. There's going to be issues coming up where you're going to have to resolve the issues. But my prayer in 2023 is this. 2022, some of you said traps will go shunned up. And you don't realize that the almighty God seed or saw what you did. He saw you. And it won't be me that get you. It would be him that get you. So, so when you when you in leadership, be careful how you talk to people. You, you can't talk to grown folks just any kind of way. You don't listen to me, y'all. You you can't be flaring off of it. And I say you, it ain't about that. And realize that it's not about you. It's all about him. It's not about me. It's all about him. And so when you realize that, you you learn you learn how to talk to people. You you learn how to do soft answers. Not not all this boastful stuff that I'm. You ain't in your position. It's, it's really, it ain't, it's not yours. Do you understand that you can fall out and go to send somebody else? So, so really, listen, 
in 2023, please hear me. Get low. Get, get low. You got to get low. And, and God will exalt you and do that. If you get low, but if you high-minded and exalting yourself, ain't nothing going to happen. You're going to tear down everything that God is trying to do. So if you just humble yourself, if you just take something, take something that you know, because some of you triggerish, you, you go off and you think that's cute. Yeah, say it. You be careful in 2023. Be careful in 23, 2023, how you just go off. Walk down the hallway. And you think that stuff is cute because you'll say, Yeah, I told them, but that ain't God. You think that's God for you to. And you're going down the hallway. And maybe me and Deacon Wilson are sitting there listening. And then the first thing you're going to do is run down with all that old foolishness. Leave that stuff alone. Please, y'all, hear me. Take your position. Don't take it lightly. Really. Let's do better in 2023. Let's, let's be what we need to be at. Do what we need to do. But do it with kindness. So I mean, you better hit me because it's going to get hard. <laughs> People get off jobs and they got issues and they mad and then you won't say the first thing to them they then went all off into space but we got to take this for real in 2023 i just i see god doing some wonderful things but i see it getting harder before it gets better because god is going to test all of our faith and see whether we believe what he said in his word father we come now and we come in the name of jesus these are your people, God, who you have chosen to be over these auxiliaries. I pray now in the name of Jesus that they would humble themselves under the mighty hands of God. And then God allow you to exalt them in due time. I pray over them at this hour, God. I pray a special blessing over each of them. I, I pray that you would make a way out of nowhere for each of them, God. As they begin to travel this journey, allow them, God, to de see more of you and less of them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
give you glory. Somebody recognize that they need to say thank you to Jesus. Thank you for food on my table. We take that for granted. Thank you for making a way. God has been so good to us. Yes, he has. He's been wonderful. Uh, just an amazing God. This, this, this to have us in the land of the living is enough to say thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. Thank you, choir. We appreciate you. I wanted to say uh, thank you, Stephanie. I just looked out and saw you, baby. All the way from Colorado. And her daughter. I think I got it right. Yeah, all right, girl. I got it. And mama. I know mama. It's always good to see y'all. I'm serious, man. Well, we better be loving as much as we can in the days that we're living here. Man. Put all the foolishness and let that alone. I was just. I was, let me pray. Father, we come now. We come in the name of Jesus and God. We thank you. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for things being as well as it is. God, you've been so wonderful. Amen. Even in the midst of our storms, you have been great. Yes, we believe you and you took us through it, but you brought us out on the other side. And for that, God, we're going to say thank you. I pray for those that are going through bereavement at this hour or any kind of illness. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would heal their bodies, heal their minds, and heal their souls. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to I do a series of sermons. Uh, I, I, I want to do a series of sermons that I think that will help us going into 2023 uh, on lessons from Joseph. Uh, Joseph had a lot to say to me uh, this week and last week as I pondered what, 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 what's, what's happening in 2023, Lord. What's, and and, and, and I, I just looked at Joseph. Amen. And I, I, I said, I said, God, we sure can learn a lot of lessons from Joseph. Down to earth, basic life lessons that, 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 that we sometimes take for granted, that, that, that we think that we can do things and God don't see us. You, you, you got to understand that God see and hear everything. So even behind the closed doors when you're talking, God hear you. And so we got to be careful, great love. I'm talking to us and me. I'm talking that. Now, first of all, I'm talking to me too. Let me get this straight. Because cause ain't nobody perfect and all of us error. But don't let that be an excuse for you to keep doing what you're doing. So sometimes you got to come out of that stuff. Because listen, if I'm growing in the Lord and you are down here, then you're going to aggravate me with that foolishness. Because I'm trying to go somewhere. And so if you, if I'm going here and then you down here, then I'm, oh God, Jesus, but when you hear it in your spirit, it aggravates your spirit when you're growing into things of God and somebody come to you and say and do some stuff, it aggravates your spirit. I'm serious, it does. It'd be like, ooh, you'd be on the other end of the phone saying, ooh, oh Jesus, uh, come on, man, let's. So, so I want to I want to do that. I, I want to I want to do a series of sermons from Joseph. I and and and, and I'm, our, our series is going to be lessons from Joseph. And uh, I'm going to subtitle each message. The scripture text that we're going to talk about today will be coming from Genesis chapter 50. And I'm only going to read one verse. Genesis chapter 50 and verse 20. Genesis chapter 50 and verse 20. You ought to be there now. That's the first book of the Bible. He says, you planned evil against me. But God planned it for good to bring about the present results. Watch this. 
the survival of many people. You may be seated. My, my subtitle to be today, today will be, I won't talk about it. Help me, help me. I won't talk about it. Right. So many times, hear me, so many times, even in ministry, we, we, we get something on somebody and we talk about it to everybody. Because you, because you don't like a particular person, you want them to drown out in the sea. And so you begin to talk about it. You, you begin to tell all of your friends about it. You, and I'm talking about right here in the house of God. I ain't talking about outside. You stand right in the house of God and you tell everybody about a particular person because you want to hurt them. Let's be real with this thing. You, you talking about them because you really want to see them hurt. But I come by to tell you today that's dangerous going into 2023. It's going to be dangerous going into 2023 trying to bury somebody here. I can't get no help right here. Because that's what we do in church today. I, I, I wanted to pump you up, but God said, no, tell the truth, man. Because somebody needs to be set free in 2023. Well, I rhymed something there. Set free in 2023. <laughs> You, 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 you got to be, listen, y'all better hear me. You got to be very careful because some of us, I'm telling you, some of us, some of us, oh, Lord Jesus. Take your time, take your time. I, I don't like them. I've got something on them now, and I'm trying them out. Attitude is wrong. What's coming out of your mouth is death that you're speaking over another brother and a sister that's trying to go to the same heaven you're trying to go to and you opening up your mouth speaking all of that death. Life and death is really in the power of the tongue. You got to be careful what you do in 2023. Now watch this now. Watch this. I want to teach. Say on, Pastor. 22 years. After selling Joseph into slavery, yeah. watch me a minute. His brothers now stand before him as the prime minister of Egypt. Let yeah. me take you there. They got mad at him. They sold him into slavery. <laughs> twenty-two years have passed now. Okay. It's been twenty-two years, y'all. It's past. And the same brother that they slow sold into slavery is now the prime minister. Well, let me make it plain to you. He's the man in charge right now. You, 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 22 years ago, you sent me somewhere. I've been in prison, but everywhere I went, I was blessed. You weren't talking back to me. Everywhere I went, I was blessed, but it's been 22 years, and now I am the man. I'm the man now, you, 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 you. but I want you to see Joseph's attitude. Oh, God have mercy. Listen, and, and listen, when they saw him, they didn't even recognize him. They did not recognize him, but watch this hand. He holds their faith in his hand. Now, they didn't even recognize you. It's been 22 years. You know, sometimes when you grow up, you've been a baby right here, but now you done grown up 22 years, and then they see you. They didn't even recognize who he was. Help me, help me, Lord Jesus. Help me, Lord Jesus. So he holds the faith in the hand. Now, I got you. Watch me. Watch me here. Watch me here. If you had been in his shoes, what would you have done? As a child of God, my brother, brothers, sold me into slavery. It's 22 years down the line, and now I'm the man. I'm asking you a question, greater love. What would you have done? Come on now. Come on. I'm going to make it real. What would you have done? It's been 22 years. What would you have done? Would you have gotten even? Would you remind them of their past offense? 
Would you? You, 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 you did it to me. Watch me here. You did it to me, and I'm, I'm in charge, and I got you now. You see, that's how we do as children of God. And you're wrong for that. I'm telling you the truth. You're wrong. You, you know, 22 years, you know, you, you, yeah, I'm the man in charge now. And sometimes as Christians, what we do is we get the word out now. It's a word play now. Mm. I'm going to get even. All right now. Ooh, look at here. You sold me into slavery. I went through hell and high water, but God blessed me. And now I'm in charge. And here you are standing in front of me. Yeah. I got your life in my hand now. I'm asking you a question, greater love. What would you have done? Yeah. Let's learn from Joseph. Watch what he does. <laughs> Watch what he does. He did not talk about it. He did not watch me. Watch me. I'm going to the Bible. He did not even, he did not talk about it. He, he did not go and say, oh Lord have mercy. He's the prime minister of Egypt, but he did not have everybody in the circle and talk about the brothers. Look at your name and say blood is thicker than water. Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Turn back to verse chapter 45. Watch this. He didn't talk about it. In verse 45 and verse 1, watch what the Bible says. Joseph could no longer keep his composure in front of all his attendants. So he called out, sent everyone away from me. No one was with him when he revealed his identity to his brothers. He, nobody was there. And so what Joseph was saying is, I'm not going to allow me to be in the flesh and expose my brothers. But when you come to church today, you want to expose everybody, y'all. Better be careful. He didn't do that, y'all. Let's learn from Joseph. He threw everybody else out of the room because he was not going to expose his brothers. How many of you come to church and you want to expose everybody when they have done you wrong? You, 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 you want to, you want to tell the world about it. Ah, but you better be careful, Lord Jesus. And listen now, it, it isn't. Watch this. Now he didn't. He made sure no one in Egypt would ever know what they'd done to him. Watch this now. He made sure. And I want to say this to you. Isn't that how Jesus treats us? I want to teach you. The fact is, he has enough on each of us to bury us. Oh, talk back to me if you can. That, that, that's, a mat, that's a matter of fact right there. God got enough on everybody in here to bury us. But he does. Oh, God have mercy, Jesus. He got enough on each of us in our secret closet right now to bury all of us. So that means ain't nobody in here better than nobody. We are all trying to go to the same heaven. But you cannot be about the business of trying to kill somebody else. He got enough on us. Just think about it. When you flip your hand up, driving down the street because somebody pulled out in front of you. Think about it. When you went to eat some food and the food came out cold and you told the waitress, I'm not to listen. I that all that old fool said. You understand what I'm saying? God see all of that. And all you're doing is trying to murder somebody else. But yet, watch this. He refuses to resurrect our past sin. Look at your name and say, God ain't going to do that. 
today. God ain't going to resurrect our past sin because God got enough on us if he would call the roll right now. A lot of us would have to get fake trees and try to hide because all of us got some stuff in us that we trying to get God to grind out of us. I can't get no help right there, but Joseph was a good boy. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. So why do we watch this? Why do we try to do that to each other? You know why we do it? Because we want to punish each other. Yeah, Come on, coach, coach, coach. Because you're looking to punish the next person. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere. You you looking to punish Jackie. You listen to punish. You looking to punish Jane. You listen. To, you looking to punish somebody when you don't realize you ain't got the not power to do that. Watch me here now. Watch me here. In First John four and eighteen, the Bible says, "What uh, what's this now? What are, I'm going to ask you. What are we afraid of?" Because yeah. the Bible says in 1 John 4 and 18, uh, perfect love drives out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. Yeah. Well, watch me now. Perfect love drives out fear. Perfect love. Stay with me, man. It drives out fear. Say it again, Isaac. Perfect love drives out the fear. But we look, watch me now. So the question is, if we understand that perfect love drives out fear, what are we afraid of? You know what we're afraid of in other people? That they'll get away with it. I'm not going to sit in this church and allow her to do this to me. You're not going to get away with that. Because when I get something on you, I'm going to drag you through the mud. Come on, y'all. This is real. You see, we want them punished so we tell Everybody, what happened? In the church, we want to punish, so we tell everybody. I mean, you tell everybody what happened. You get in your closet and you just tell everybody. So when the person comes to church, everybody knows. And you know what you have just become? I'm gonna show you the scripture. You ain't nothing but an old murderer. You like your father the devil. You're a murderer. Come on. It's gonna be real. So, so, so we tell everybody, and when we do this church, watch me here. We play God. When you do that kind of stuff, you are playing God. And ain't nobody in here is a God. Because if we do the scripture, the Bible says in Romans chapter 12 and verse 19, vengeance is mine, says the Lord, and I will repent. Come on, vengeance is mine, and I will repent. But what we do is we become God because we want to repay, and we do the evil for evil thing, but that's not the way Joseph did it. And we can learn some lesson from Joseph. If he says vengeance is mine yes, it is. and I will repay, mm -hmm. I would rather him get the person back than me trying to get him back. Because he knows how to get you. God knows how to strip you down and bring you back up. Ain't nobody talking. Because he ain't trying to kill you when he begins to bring stuff in your life. He's trying to help you. He's trying to bring you closer to him. And when it happens, don't say he's trying to kill me because he's a God of love. He loves everybody unconditionally. Look at your neighbor and say, I know he loves me. You might not, but I know he does. You know why? Listen. He 
alone knows the weakness in your offenders that causes them to hurt you. God knows it. He knows their weaknesses. Watch this. <laughs> and he knows whether they have repented and he knows whether they change. But it's not on you. God knows. Come, come on, y'all. God knows. He knows your offender. God knows your offender better than you know. That's why you ought to let God get vengeance on them. He says, I will repay them. Allow God to repay them. Don't you try to do it yourself. I've lived long enough and passed long enough. To where, if I obey the scripture, God says, I make your enemy your footstool. And some of the same brothers who tried to kill me, I, listen, he says, I make your enemy your footstool. Y'all ain't gonna talk back to me. Same brothers who tried to kill me, one day they needed me. Y'all ain't talking back to me. It was years later, but they needed me because the Bible is real and you are wrong. You let him get it. Joseph understood the principle. He let God do the vengeance. He wasn't trying to get his brothers back. Yeah. <laughs> so we set the standard by which we ourselves will be judged. Because the Bible says in Matthew 7 and 2, you will be judged in the same way that you judge others. Yes, yes, yes. I don't think you take that heavy enough. Come on, Pastor. You're going to be judged. Come on, there. The same way you judge others, you're going to be judged. See, if we pay attention to Scripture and understand that, I'm not saying you're going to be perfect, but you can't keep walking in all of that stuff for 50 years. You're going to be, oh, God, help me, Jesus. If that's the truth, watch me. Thank you, Jesus. You're not comfortable with it. That's right. And what I just told you, it shouldn't make you uncomfortable. Amen. Right. I, you, 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 because you, you walk away from this today. And you walk back in the same foolishness that you've been walking in. Listen, listen. It won't be me that get you. It will be God that get you. You don't want God to put a weapon on you. Man, when God put a weapon on you, it's going to be a weapon. When God starts to spank you, it's going to be a real spanking. I'm telling you, listen. If you would do the Bible, the Bible really works. Yeah. Mm. So, oh God, why am I tell the truth? Watch me. Yeah. I'm gonna tell the truth. Because yeah. yeah. he says it. We set the standards yeah. by which we ourselves will be judged. Yeah. If a brother take a fall. And you know he's down there. Yeah. You pass by. Yeah. And you see him. Yeah. He's doing wrong. Yeah. But you say. He go great love by the church. Yeah. That's my brother in the Lord. But he's doing wrong. Yeah. What you do is. You see him doing wrong. And what you do, instead of getting out where you are at, since you've got so much power, instead of getting out and praying for the brother and trying to encourage the brother to get back in the pain, what you do is you come to Greater Love Baptist Church and you begin to spread the news. And so everybody know now and what you have become is a murderer. I'm telling you something. You are a murderer. And some of you don't care because all you want to do is try to get revenge. But he said, vengeance is mine. If I do wrong, let him get me. You ain't got no business trying to get me. If I fall, come on, pray for me that I would get back up. Can we? Uh, am I in the real church? Am I in the real church or you just want some excitement?
excitement all every Sunday. Yes, sir. Come on, Do you want excitement every Sunday where you can? No. Or do you want the word of God where you can get some help in? Some of you are right here where I'm at. Right here where I'm talking. Joseph can teach us a very valuable lesson if we listen. Now watch this stuff. Watch this stuff. Yeah. Was there. Yeah. He says in Ephesians yeah, yeah, yeah. chapter 4 verse 31 and 32 he said get rid of all bitterness yes. Yes. instead be kind to each other yes. tender hearted forgiving one another just as God has forgiven you. Huh? Yeah, okay. So when you have been wrong, so be a doozy because some of you. Forgive and forget. Come on. Come on, Pastor. Forgive and forget. Because some of y'all, you forgive, you forgive, but you hold that thing right there on your side, and all you're going to do is weigh yourself down. You got to forgive them and forget about it. I can't get no help right there because you say, well, I know I ain't going to never forget about it. The devil is a liar. If you got the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, you can forget that stuff. I can't get no help, but you got to be in the Word. You got to have a prayer life. You got to know the real God, and God will give you the power. To forget about it. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He said, hold no bitterness. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Come on now. Joseph said, here they come. I'm the prime minister. I got the power. I can get them back. Yeah. But I refuse to do it the way the world would do it. I'm going to do it the way that God told me to do it. And greater love, I pray that in 2023 that we start doing what the Bible says and stop getting locked up in your feelings and doing what you want to do and say what you want to say. It's dangerous to do that in this day and time. I have learned so much. Uh -huh. Even teaching the series Watch Your Mouth on Monday nights. Yes, sir. It's teaching me to keep my mouth shut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if I've learned, y'all, you better hear me as your pastor. I've learned, and I'm learning and still learning to be quiet sometimes. You can't keep sitting in church and going off on people. 2023, 2022, you done went off. And 2023, you better be careful because you might go off the deep end. Joseph can teach us some valuable lessons. I ain't going to talk about this. Hmm? Yeah. I got something on Curtis. Uh -oh. I ain't gonna talk about it, Curtis. Yes, I got something on your Baptiste, but I ain't gonna talk about it, brother. Oh, yeah. I ain't gonna spread your stuff all out in this church. Now I ain't got nothing on them. I'm just using them as examples. Come on. All right. See what we do. Watch me, here, and I'm done. It's all right. Well, what we do is we we do. That evil stuff. Watch me now. <laughs> you, you just cuss me out. Watch me. I'm going. You, you, right after church, you come to the parking lot and you cuss me out. And I'm sitting there, oh, cuss me out. For they didn't cuss me out. Watch me here. You cuss me out. And then, 4 o'clock this afternoon. Oh, there be Jesus. 4 o'clock this afternoon. You didn't cuss me out. I didn't went home. Got myself together to come back at 4 o'clock. So Scott excited about her musical. You just cuss me out. And then, and then you think this is going to get you away with God. Um, 
I want so and so to sing the solo for me today. And you get up there and you say, Jesus, take me near the cross. And everybody fall out in the church. Oh, oh, oh. And you think you've done something. Yes. You really do. And all you have done is perform before the people. Yeah. But God says, I see you. I know what you have done. And I'm going to get you for that. Y'all ain't talking back to me. But you will go out of here. You will run right out of here and say, and say, God bless it. God show bless me. He show bless my boy. The devil is alive. the mothers here now because they're older than me. Girl, you know, you know, so and so, I ain't trying to do that. Because God's, God said vengeance is his. He said he going to repay. And when he repay, he's going to repay. And you better believe the Bible because God, he said, I'll make your enemy a footstool. Why are you mad running crazy? You done ran out of gas up here up the street and I'm coming to greater love because I come down here a lot. I'm driving and you out of gas and you sitting at the side of the road. Come on out of here. But if I'm evil, I'm going to ride by and say, look at him. And cuss me up, God beat you down. Now take your beat. No. You got to stop living people. You, you see, you can't be like that. And that's the way some of us are. You know, you I I tell you, they that church today. And you know, I told them, I told them that, 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 that the people need help. Yes, Amen. Yes, Love covers a multitude of sin. And so when you help them, you help yourself. Because God is looking at that. I'm going to sit down after this. God is looking at the way you respond to other people. Come on. Come on. Come on. He is. Yes, he is. He's looking at the way you respond to other people. But like, like a great love. Lord Jesus. I can talk about this, sir, because I'm fast in I can be 
be sitting outside digging wheels. I really can. This is disgusting business. And here's some of y'all to come. You know. I know. What? What? Come on. Y'all, y'all see how I was? You, you see my. This is your attitude. Well. And Deacon Wilson, you better put up. So I'm going to dig it. I ain't going to tell you nothing, Deacon. Deacon Wilson, you know me. Because Pastor Gray ain't going to do nothing. And, and, and Deacon Wilson, listen, I've worked around, I, this has been 40 something years. I tried to come with the other day under Pastor Carter, they hit me. I, I, Deacon Wilson is a, he's a guy that's, he's calm. So sometimes he, he has to calm me down. Y'all might not think that, but for real. He's a calm, calm person. And I, I really believe that he got that from Walmart because he had to deal with a whole lot of people. He, he ain't a hard person. But, but when a person want to see right or see the stuff done right, you would think they're hard. Can I give you an example? This is me. I can talk about me because this is me. And you can't change me. So don't even try it. Somebody might come by me and say, say Mandy come by me and say, Pastor Graham, blah, 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 blah. And I, I got so much on my mind. I'm, I ain't gonna go, yeah, man, go ahead. And then it might be wrong. And then if Deacon Wilson call you back in that back, the principal office back there. <laughs> listen, listen. And he gonna be calm. Listen, man. We we won't come on man, we don't do do that. You know, come on, we don't what you gonna do? Watch me, great love. You gonna be calm coming out of the principal office. Because he's gonna say, well, we, we okay? Yeah, we okay. We we alright. Come on. Man, we all right. He was, you know we all right. And you got that big grin on. And as soon as you leave the principal office, you come into the sanctuary and you're going to do this. Y'all watch me because I'm going to sit down after this for real concert. Sit down. Listen. <laughs> Deacon Wilson, yeah, yeah, I got you, man. Yeah. You know, he didn't, he's sitting and they telling me what I shouldn't do. And Pastor Grant told me that I can't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. to being thrown in the pit mm -hmm. 
sold into slavery by his own family. He didn't hold it against him. Like Pastor said, he didn't talk about it. His, their, the family's faith was held in his hands because there was a famine that was going on in the land. And Joseph held the power to be able to allow them to be able to have food and resources to survive. Amen. He could have did them like they did him. But he didn't talk about it. Oh, yeah. Said all that to say in 2022, some of us have went through some stuff. Yeah, yeah. Some of our biggest haters wasn't those that was on the outside, but those that was closest to us. We've been betrayed and we've been backstabbed by not people from the outside, but from our own family. The people that was closest to us. We may not have been sold into physical slavery, but we were sold out by people that we thought that would never do us like that. But in the middle of Pastor Grant's message, he said something that was very profound that I said only even on last night. In 23, we shall be set free. You ought to just hashtag that and just let everybody know that in 23, I'm going to be free. You say, well, what are you going to be free from? I'm going to be free, number one, from people. I will no longer allow people to be able to control my destiny anymore. They will not be able to control my mind. They will not be able to control my actions. They will not be able to control my attitude. I shall be free in 23. And the best way that you can start off 23 is today. By giving your life to Christ. The man that died. The man that has, has never held anything against you. Although you turned your back on him, he's never turned his back on you. Although you betrayed him, although that you may have had an affair on him, he's never had an affair or betrayed you. And so if you are here today, you ought to come. You ought to come. Take this chair. Start this new year off right. Saying that today is the day that I'm going to start off on the right track. I'm getting back right. I'm getting back aligned with God. No longer would the devil be able to allow him to be able to hold me in bondage anymore because I'm free. In 23. Yeah. You ought to just say that with me one time. I'm free. I'm free. In 23. In 23. Only you know what you're free from. You may be free from sickness. Yes, you may be free from family. Yes. You may be free from worrying about your kids. Yes. You may be free from your marriage. Yes. You may be free. Whatever it is that you are going through, you ought to just yell that one more time. I'm free. I'm free. In 23. In 23. And if you are here, if you are here, you want to start this off right. If you want to start 23 off right, 1123. Today is the day, not tomorrow, not next week, but today is the day. Now is the time that you're going to say, I'm free in 23. You want to come. You want to come. You may be saying, but I'm saved, I'm sanctified, I already know the Lord, but I just need somebody to pray with me. We're here to pray with you. You ought to come. If you want to just make a declaration to the devil and say, you will no longer hold me hostage anymore because I'm free in 23, you ought to come. You ought to come. We are here. We're here with you. As this music ministry renders us a number, if you are here, you ought to come. You see, Reverend, you don't even know what I've been going through. It's tough for me to come. But guess what? If you just raise your hand, somebody from Greater Love will walk with you. Yeah. Because we believe here that everybody is somebody. Yeah. And nobody never has to take that walk alone. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want somebody just to walk with you, just hold your hand up. And we'll walk with you because the Bible says that if you make one step, I'll make two. If you're here, you ought to come. You've been waiting on a blessing. Yes, I love you. It seems it just won't come. Doors are shut.
closer. Thank you, Lord. Look down at a fallen man like me and you. He says, Isaac, I, I got to go. I got to die. But I'll rise again. And in my rising, son, I want you to do something for me before I come. I want you to do something. I want you to, to partake in what I'm going to call communion. I want you to partake in it because it's going to be part of my broken body. And it's going to be part of the blood that came shedding down the cross. And he says, Isaac, I want you to do this as often as you possibly can. But 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 here at Greater Love, we chose to do it on the first Sunday of each month. And after Jesus had broke the bread and poured the wine, he said, Grace, Father, we come now and we come in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for things being as well as it is. God, it could have been worse. But I thank you for being as well as it is. Thank you for the people of God. God, I speak blessing over their lives on the day. I speak healing. I speak restoration today, God, in the name of Jesus. And as we partake in this communion, somebody came in sick, but as they partake in drinking your blood, the healing will flow through their body. I give you praise and glory for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
want us to know the significance of what we are doing. This is for his body. This is his blood. Let's do it in unison. Come on. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, y'all can pick it back up. Be cool, be cool. Amen. 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 Amen.
come here, come here, uh, you, uh, me with your children. They all the only one left. Uh, yeah, you, Jojo, and I don't want to call names because I'll be that messed up. Stand right there, baby. I, I, I really forgot to pray over these children. They're getting ready to go back to school. They had a break. But we want our children to be covered. They need to be covered under the blood. Oh, that's right. Thank you, Deacon. And that Deacon was real sharp with that dude. Come on. Carissa. I got the wife there, right? So I got to get the daughter. Listen, children, we know y'all getting ready to go back to school. And uh, I'm just going to pray that the Lord will the Lord will protect you in those dangerous schoolyards and, 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 and the hallways and the spirits are lurking everywhere. And I think we take that for granted. But Father, we come now. We come in the name of Jesus. And God, I lift these kids up to you. You already know their future. I bind the enemy at this hour because he tries to take them out when they're young. But God, I, I pray in the name of Jesus that when they enter that schoolyard, whatever day they're going back to school, whether it be Wednesday, Tuesday, or Monday, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would cover them under your blood. God, we don't take the devil for granted, but we know that you got all power. And so I pray today, God, that the power that you have and the power that is invested in me, that you would protect them in the schoolyard. I bind the enemy right now that's going to try to come against them. Keep their minds together, God. Keep their minds sharp. Allow them to pay attention to teachers, Lord. Allow them to go higher in you with their grades. I thank you, God. I believe that you're going to do it for their brain. I thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. ourselves from this service yes. getting ready for four o'clock to go into another one we come now God and we thank you for the service that has been rendered here today in the name of Jesus we pray and the church did say